Hey everyone, so we're going to talk today about how you're going to beat the executor mirror when your executor has lower stars than your opponent's executor. So first we're going to look at the gameplay. We're going to do a few uh, examples of how to play it versus some different compositions, who you should target first, how your opening turn should go, and then we'll look at the modding of the team to make it run the way you want it to at the end. So here I'm fighting Ramdam, he has a six star, and I'm on Malga, so I have a four star executor. So how we start the fight? We have our Boba going first. We want to make sure that we don't trigger Boss's bonus turn straight away. So we're just going to use the special on boss to apply the target lock. At 6 star, it's worth knowing, as with the Executor being 6 star, if your Boba has full 6 e mods and the Zeta, then he's going to be gaining a bonus 20 speed. So 5 for each of the ships here and 5 for the capital ship. So he will outspeed the capital ship and basically every other ship. Well, it will outspeed your Bosk and your map. So we have the breach on there, Bosk here. The Piet will usually prioritize targeting the BAM due to the health pool, so we'll just use the basic. It doesn't use the assist special or the mass attack special, as we don't have any breach or target lock target. So now that prop our bonus turn meter to our boss. We're going to breach their Beskar armor and look. Their racing Beskar. This is going to allow us to use the basic on our Razor Crest before our Executor takes a turn to apply marked to their Beskar armor and So you see here. Apply a basic, he becomes marked. Now we can mass attack and really put some damage into the Beskar Armour Mandalorian. And it also means that on subsequent turns, we can focus by that Beskar Armour. They brought Slave 1 in. Uh, it's either going to be Slave 1 or IG-2000. I think it prioritized Slave 1 because he has not spawned. Or it might be the reinforcement priority. Or it might be just because he's a higher power if he's Relic A, but he just comes in and doesn't really do anything because he only has one target locked enemy to attack. So we just keep focusing on the BAM, we get to pull Slave 1 from more damage. We've already pop propped his extra life so we know that if we get him down, he's done. So we now call in IG-2000, which I think is incorrect, I think we should call in Xanadu Blood because the reinforcement ability for mass retribution is fantastic. But the IG-2000 is big damage. As you can see, he's chunked half the life off of the best arm. And the BAM is down. Now, once the BAM is down, this fight is very much an autopilot. You want to be getting your breaches around if possible. And once a target that isn't Bosk is breached, you want a basic with the BAM to apply mark. But apart from that, quite a straightforward fight now. So we just have the basic. We can apply a special here for a breach. Each breach counts towards our capital ship pseudo payout effect, which is great for us. As we have a below seven star, we can use the second special on the Executor to freely heal whoever we feel is the most vulnerable because you have to have the 7 star ability to apply the taunt and the foresight to the target. So we heal up the BAM here. We then use our seismic charge to get some big damage going. They've got their ship contract paid off which is good for them, but now we have both of our contracts paid off, so we can just go however we want. 
Also, as this applies breach to everyone, I think the seismic charges on Boba should have reset for some big damage. So, this was a mistake. We should have called IG-2000 to assist, because IG-2000 will do more damage than the Slave 1 due to the double tap. We can now bring in our Xanadu blood for our retribution, not that it really matters. Now our Slave 1 Seismix on the go, three ships down, and we're just going to clear up the IG-2000 in uh, short order. Super smooth, super easy. Okay, we have another recording here, and this is again a four star. This time we're going to punch up against a seven star Executor. Should be relatively the same deal. We're going to try the, exactly the same strategy. This was as I was starting my testing, so my strategy wasn't quite nailed down 100% at this point. But the opener should mostly be the same thing. So it should be this time that their executor goes before every ship because it now has the 192 speed. And it hits our bam, which means our boss gets a turn meter influx, so he's gonna go he's gonna go first from our team. We will just apply the breach to the houndstooth. Slave 1 goes and he can apply Breach to their Beskar Mandalorian. Seems that I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do here, but I got there in the end. Now their BAM's going to go next, but he's still breached. So we will just base it. Get the mark going. Mass attack. Controversially, our opponent has a Palpatine Shuttle as a reinforcement. Not quite sure that does anything, but as you can see, we keep we just keep going in on the BAM. We've put a lot of damage into him already. We try, we do try the Xanadu Blood this time, which I think is the better method. And we call the Slave One, finish off that BAM, nice and easy. Now we just start applying our target locks, get our seismic charge trigger, which pops our contract. We haven't hit the auto breach target lock contract yet, but I'm sure that that's going to be imminent. See, another thing here, you notice their capital ship, if we just wind back slightly, their capital ship healed, and because it's seven star, applied spawn and foresight to the Xanadu blood. This is not great for the AI, honestly, because really, you never want your attackers taunting. So that's maybe some issue that they can shore up. I'm not even sure I noticed it had taunt because I kept focusing on the, uh, the boss. So we pop a heal onto our band as he's squishiest, no taunt on our end. Get a, get a uh, hit on the two guys there. We still haven't got our mass uh, breach, mass target lock going. But as you can see, even that's not too much of a problem. Now their boss no longer has torn, and we just get to carve away at the IG-2000. And there's our, there's our pseudo payout from Ship. And we're just going to start mopping up their ships here. Like they have absolutely 0% chance of winning from this point. Honestly, I think you could press auto. And another big seismic charge from Boba. And the fight's over. 
Okay, so here I was uh, helping my friends Skype learn the strategy for this matchup. Um, you might know Skype from Grand Arenas. We do a number of Grand Arenas where I help him through or he'll come on and do Grand Arenas with me. But anyway, here we're doing another four star again versus a seven star. Again, we're going with the Ah, so here we actually tried the IG up front strategy. Just, again, this was testing just to see what strategy was the best while I was refining how I wanted things to work. So again, their capital ship goes first, pops the basic onto your IG, and triggers your boss. Your boss applies taunt to their boss. Oh, in this case he's doing it to... Oh, he did it to IG. I'm not sure why he did that. But I guess it doesn't actually matter because their boss hadn't taken a turn, you're still going to get to... So yeah, you can see how this works. So even when you breach the IG or the BAM first before the boss, because your BAM is going to go before your executor, you're still going to get to use the basic on the breach target to get that mark. And once you get that mark, Ah, so this is where this one went wrong. The the IG used a special which dispelled. So that's why going for the IG is a bad idea. Because now we still get to use our mass attack because this is a breach target, but we're not getting to fight we're not getting to kill off the primary target we want, which really is the bad. I guess we were having a conversation about what to do here. So he does the mass attack. But you see that's not nearly as impactful to the to the strat you're going for. And then the Xanadu comes in. Now we have no debuffs because the boss can counter-attack and then just remove it. So this one this one looks much worse. Again, we try to go for the go for the IG, and I guess we will bring in Slave One. Okay, he brings in Xanadu. I think we should, ah Slave One, right? So Slave One will then pop the AOE. Gets a reasonable amount of damage, but. Still, we're nowhere near close to killing anyone at this point. But we are getting that retribution counter-attacks from the Slave 1, which is pumping out target locks, which does help to fuel the payouts. So here, he finally applies the mark to the ship. Might be a bit late. Pops the heal on the Slave 1, who doesn't taunt, as it's only a 4 star capital. I guess we keep going in on the IG, but this might be... Ah, oh, it's a Vader. So that's still not too scary. We finally got our contract. We tried to stun the Xanadu or the Bam. So we stun the Bam. We now apply Mark to Xanadu, so we have so we have two targets we can attack without having without being locked behind the hounds tube. Guess we finish someone off here. Yeah, so we call the IG because of the double tap for pretty big damage. To be fair. 
Now we get to seismic, knock off a couple of ships, near enough. See, each, so you can see, even with this pretty, and that was a, that was an egregious error. So here, he has the option of just killing the BAM, just decides to basic the boss. That would mean we still have Slave 1 alive. And now we're still locked behind this taunt because... Okay, but we get a mass attack. Just get, it's annoying getting locked behind the boss. This is why you really want those breaches to come out of the woodwork. But this this match is still very comfortable. So even with the suboptimal start, this is still a still a very easy matchup. We even get to blow up their capital ship first. Everyone loves that animation. Probably the best animation in the game. I'm still partial to the Wrecker throw B ones at people, but that animation is fun. So now we're just mopping up. I think had we had we have focused, I guess Bam wasn't going to die, so Slave One was still going to die. But as you can see, this would still be a high banner victory, and we get the win. Okay, we're back with uh, Skype's account again. This time he's going to face JCW895. At this point, we've revised his mods, so we had the speed order on the ships of how we wanted them to be. And I think we had the strategy down, so I think he does this the way I recommend doing it. So we start the fight with a special on the boss. Either boss or bam should be fine. So he specials bam, boss takes his bonus turn and scores. It's actually slightly worse for us because now they can mass attack the boss which is why you want to target the boss first. But we can apply our mark to their ban. They will do their mass attack. Which is, really we gave them free damage there. That's why you want to target the boss first. Because then they won't get the boss breach before their capital ship takes a turn. That isn't an issue against seven star capital ships as the seven star capital is going to take a turn before you attack. So now we get to breach with Bosk. And then our capital ship will give us the mass attack on their Beskar armor Mandalorian. So we get to chunk some damage into him. Almost through his first life. Now we're through his first life. Now we get to call and assist on the Beskar armor with our IG. And he's going down very quickly. He should die to our first reinforcement. So our first reinforcement comes in. Should be Slave 1. Okay, we're doing Xanadu. So I guess we're doing Xanadu here for the retribution. Because then we can both clear up all of the rubbish on the boss. And also, we're going to feed into our ship contract uh, much faster. And because of the mark, we're still going to get to finish off that bat. So, it's hard to judge how much damage the AoE from the Xanadu is going to do. As you see, it killed the BAM here. We could have targeted Bosk and then double tapped with the IG just to get some more damage in. But... I think it's not worth taking the risk because the the uh, leader ability, not the leader, the crew ability of the Razor Crest is so powerful for the team. Like all your specials dealing breach, and that synergizing so well with the capital ship, and it's the source of your contract payout. 
that I think it's just best to not risk it and get the BAM killed whenever you can. So they do some stuff which we don't really care about. Yes, everyone's breached, but it's not a massive concern for us. Like we are fully in control of this fight. We can pop a heal on whoever we think is the most fragile, in this case the IG. Now we can stun the boss. Basic the boss. Just get stuck. We get stuck behind the boss a little bit here. But now we've got our double payout. We'll just keep going in on the boss because we're locked into that at the moment. They get a big seismic charge. But not enough to really concern us. And we get to bring in our own big seismic charge now. So as you can see, like they they are looking very fragile. So we're gonna stay on the the uh, slave one. Should get him dead with the next basic, but we might. I if it was me, and I can't remember what we did here, I would be targeting the IG or the Xanadu with just a basic or a dub or an assist onto IG for a double tap. Yeah, there we go. We did the assist onto IG for a double tap. Get the kill. Now we can... We could AoE here. I would AoE onto boss calling the... Calling the uh, IG 2000 for the double tap. Or calling the slave one because he now dispels on basic. Okay. Well, that... that Getting a kill is never bad. Now we're just plowing through this, this boss. And basically, the, the fight has been essentially over since we killed the Razor Crest. But now it's really over. So at this point, um, Sky backs out of the fight because he doesn't want to knock this guy before his payout. But you can see that this fight is super over, super easy. Okay, so now let's look at the modding and the turn order you want for this week. So the first thing to know is what your speed is on your PS. So our PS at four star is 174 speed. That is with all sixes except a triangle. So we need our Beskar armor Mandalorian to be at least one speed faster than that. So if we find Bam here. So this is 181, so that's plenty fast. I think the math for a 5 star is that Piet is 179 speed. So you can achieve this at Relic 3 with, I've got full 6 E's, so you can probably do no 6 E's, less 6 E's, or not as high a Relic level. He's going to need to be gear 13, but if he's gear 13, you may be able to get away with one or two relic levels or not as many 6E's investments, as long as he is one speed faster than your execute. The second thing you need here is that your secondary bounty hunter ship, so the attacker ship, so whether that's Slave 1 or IG or Xanadu, it shouldn't be Xanadu because Xanadu is always, basically always slower than this, correct? So Slave 1 or IG need to be faster than the Razor Crest. So we have 185 speed on the IG. And we have 168 plus his unique giving another 20. So 188 on the Slave 1. So both of these are fine. But that's the only thing you need to really know about the body. You need to make sure that your secondary attacker, so the Slave 1 or the IG, 
is faster than your razor crest and that your razor crest is faster than your executor. As long as you have that down, you're gonna have no problems. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful and you can smash people with super whaley executives. Hope this is useful. Uh, if, if it is, like, comment, subscribe, share with your shards, share with your guilds, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks very much. Goodbye.